All right, that's enough. We live. Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn that the word of truth that is given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by Ooh, grace through God. faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching on the camera, the saints that are out there that we don't even know about. But no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. You know what I mean? All right, recap. Last week, what was we talking about? What we talked about last week? We talked a little bit about Ezekiel. Who we talk about more, Ezekiel or Jeremiah? Who we talk about more? Last week? Who we talk about more? Y'all got to pick one. Which one was it? Jeremiah. So the hard say Jeremiah. What you say? Thank you, darling. Appreciate it. So what were we talking about with Jeremiah then? Don't scratch. Ezekiel, Jeremiah saw a king. That was a week ago. I worked on last week. Don't nobody remember last week? We really finished the work now. Season ended. First Jeff now. Yeah. yeah, Jeremiah. Hey, we read a lot of Jeremiah. We talked a little bit about Ezekiel. You remember Jeremiah was trying to warn the people we had a false prophet. You don't remember the false prophet? Remember Jeremiah had the had had put his head in a yoke, right? Yeah, remember the false prophet. Good job. The false prophet came. He broke the yoke, and he said, "He said, man, in two years, Most High God gonna turn this whole thing around. He gonna bring everything back." Jeremiah like that don't sound like what Most High God been telling me. He's like, "But let it be true." He said, "Hey, man, whatever you say, let it be true." However, the prophets that came before me and you, you know what I'm saying, back in the old days, them boy prophesied a. War and pestilence. You know what I'm saying? You talking about peace. He said, let the prophet to speak about peace. Let him be known as a prophet only after what he says come about. Right? Then after that, the Most High God told uh, told Hananiah, who was the false prophet, he told him that in the year he had died. Go ahead and sit your butt down. He said, in the year, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be about a year and he had died. So before it even come time for it to see if his, his prophecy came true, he would be dead. Right? So his prophecy, of, of course, is not going to come true. Because we already know the history and he was a false prophet. So the true prophet was Jeremiah. We also read a little bit out of Ezekiel. You remember Ezekiel, he warned us. He warned us about the people that would uh, try to make us feel good about lies. Right? Remember he said there's people that's going to make the, the, those that are righteous feel sorrowful, feel bad. And those that are unrighteous, they're going to strengthen their hands. They make you believe a lie and make you feel good about believing a lie. Meanwhile, they make you feel bad. They make you feel stupid if you believe the truth. You feel you believe the truth, they go look at you like, man, I can't believe you. Follow after the Bible? What? You believe that stuff? That old book, you believe that? Man wrote that. The white man wrote They're going to make you, they're going to try to make you look like you an idiot for believing something, the only thing that's real or in this world, right? And then you believe all the stuff that they work with, they're going to make you feel, they'll be like, yeah, you good. You good, right? What question you got? Lies, they God definitely know he's lying. I don't know. I don't know if he said it, but God definitely know if you lying. That's a fact. That's a fact. That's right. Yeah, everything that you do, he forget it. So if you live your life. And and you uh you know what I'm saying you live your life and you a sinner all your life but you turn from all your sin he'll forget all that sin if you, as long as you walk righteously for the rest of your life. In the same way, if you turn from unrighteous I mean turn from righteousness and you live unrighteously, 
then he's going to look at you and he's going to be like, I forgot all the rights. Every, every good thing you ever did, he's going to forget it because you, you, you started to live bad, right? That's why we got to make sure that we, uh, we turn from sin and then we keep it that way. You know what I'm saying? Ezekiel, Ezekiel was made to be a sign for us, right? When Ezekiel was walking around talking, you, we read it already, but y'all have to take, y'all have to understand that is when Ezekiel was walking around, he was a sign. Just the mere fact that he was speaking was a sign because the most high God, he, remember, he closed his mouth. So when his mouth got closed, he wasn't really like, you got to imagine, you remember Ezekiel started off laying on his side, right? And then he's laying on his side for 390 days altogether on each side, right? 40 days on one side, 300, 390, I think it was on, the, or it was 300, what was it? It was 390 on one side and then 40 on the other side, right? And you remember, he's not talking unless he has the word from the most high God. Y'all put them down, pay attention, please, right? Unless he got the word from the most high God, he's not saying a word. So on a regular day, you might see Ezekiel and be like, hey, what's going on, man? Can you pass me the, uh, you know what I mean? He passed me that, you know what I'm saying, that wine skin over there. I'm trying to, Ezekiel look at you like, like he got to make sign language and all that stuff because Ezekiel can't talk. Y'all remember that? Grab, uh, it might be Ezekiel 3, maybe. Yep. Let's see if it's Ezekiel 3. Give me the end. Like Ezekiel 3. What's the last verse of Ezekiel 3? <sighs> you don't know. You want verse 26. 26. This is Ezekiel. I want 26 or I want before that? Uh, uh, 26. All right. This is Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 26. And I will make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth, that thou shalt be dumb, and shalt not be to them a reprover, for they are in a rebellious house. Right? Mm -hmm. So he's, he told, he, look, this is the beginning of his prophecy. Right? It's the beginning of his prophecy. He told him, he said, listen, I'm going to make your tongue stick to the top of your darn mouth. It's like when you get that bread, that good bread, you know what I'm saying? You get the bread, you know what I'm saying? No, it got to be the good wonder bread. Though. Only you know what I'm saying? like wonder bread. Make you put the little slices on right there. there. You know what I'm saying? You go all the way white, put the mayonnaise on that thing, you know what I'm saying? Ain't no miracle with mayonnaise on that thing, put it on there, slide it on there. You eat that thing, that bread gets stuck to the top. That's how his tongue was, just stuck up there. I don't know. So the the books say he made them dumb. In other words, he made it he made them look like his brain don't work right because he couldn't talk. So now you got to take this guy that you see. This is a priest, first of all, right? He in the captivity, and the only time he's able to speak is when the Most High God give him a word. You try to talk to him on a regular day, like, hey, you might you want something to drink, man? You know what I'm saying? He got a sign to you and try to tell you, his tongue stuck to the top of his mouth, can't even talk. Right? So him walking around in like period is a sign for us. Just because everybody know Ezekiel don't talk, but when that word come, that boy gets to talking. So he's like this special thing. He's like this. He's not like just a regular guy walking around. It's like, no, nah, that's the dude that don't talk unless God talking to him. You know what I'm saying? So he got that reputation so everybody know when he opened his mouth, it's, it's like what I tell y'all boys, right? I tell y'all, don't be running around crying over time, all the time in front of people. Why do I tell you don't cry a lot in front of people? I don't care nothing about no embarrassment. Why I tell you that? Well, I ain't never said nothing about nobody calling you. Y'all don't even be paying attention to what I be teaching y'all. No, I tell you that you got to grow up and you got to be a man one day. And a man can't waste his cry. When a man cry, what's supposed to happen? The whole world's supposed to move when a man cry. Right? The world see a man cry, they supposed to look at that and be like, oh, that boy never cry. It must be serious. Right? That's how you supposed to, that emotion that come from a man, it's, people supposed to look at that and be moved by it. If you crying all the time, they just going to look at you like, man, that boy, it don't mean nothing. He always crying. If you known for crying, they just going to dismiss you crying and be like, it don't mean nothing because you cry for anything. In the same way, that's how Ezekiel's voice was because Ezekiel didn't use his voice at all. 
and he's only known for using his voice when the Most High God is talking, then they know as soon as he talk, it's like, oh, this that's that's God talking there. They know it already because he's a prophet. Right. And he's already known he's known for not talking until the Most High God talked to him. Grab, uh, grab Ezekiel chapter 14. This is Ezekiel chapter 14. Give me verse, uh, give me verse, uh, well, give me verse one. Where we leave off last week? Did we already read 14? No, we left off on 13, 23. I think we read all of 13. 13, okay. Yeah, this is Ezekiel chapter 14. Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me and sat before me. Right. He said, look, certain of the elders of Israel, they came before me. They sat before me. Watch this. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart. and put." Look, he said they set up their idols in their heart. And watch what he say about them. And put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should mm -hmm. I be inquired of by them? He said, shall I be inquired of by them. What does he mean by that? Should I answer their questions? Should he said, do you them? think, why are they coming to Ezekiel? They want to hear from the word. They want to hear from the Lord. They want, they want Ezekiel to tell them what did the most high God say. Right? They come to Ezekiel with questions like, what, can, you, can, you, can you talk to God for me and see what he got to say about this? Because he's a prophet. When you got a prophet in your midst, you're supposed to be able to go to the prophet and be like, listen, I just need to know. God, this, that, and the other happened. What does God have to say about this, this, this thing? Should I, should I go up and go into, go into war in this place or that place? And you're supposed to get a response. If the Most High God want to give it to the prophet, he might give you a response. Right? So they going, and the Most High God looking at these people like, these the boys I show you. Remember we talked about how Ezekiel, the wall opened up and you could see the people with all the idols on the walls and all that stuff, all the elders. These them same elders, right? So he's looking at them like y'all got y'all idols in your heart. In other words, you ain't got the idol in your hand, but in your heart, that's really what you serve is that idol. And you want to come, you think you're going to be inquired of by me? Most I got to tell him, I ain't trying to grab, hold that. Grab, um, Grab, grab Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 1. This is Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 1. He said, do you think they going to be inquired of by me? That's crazy. <clears throat> Word that came to Jeremiah from Yahuwah, saying, Thus speaketh Yahuwah, God of Israel, saying, mm -hmm. Write thee all the words that I've spoken unto thee in the book. For lo, the day so he told come. Jeremiah, he said, Write all everything I'm telling you, write it in the book. That's how we got what we got right now. He said, Write it in the book. What else? For the days come, saith Yahuwah, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith the Lord. And I will mm -hmm. cause them to return to the land that I gave their fathers, and they shall possess mm -hmm. it. And these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For thus says Yahuwah, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and, of, and not of peace. Ask ye now, and see whether a man does travail with child. Therefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness. Alas, for the day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. For mm -hmm. that day, says Yahuwah of hosts, that I from off thy neck, burst thy bonds, and so no more serve. You breaking up bad, bro. Can you hear me? Like, this is going in and out bad. Make sure it's not me. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm.
but they shall serve Yahuwah their God and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. Therefore, fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, says Yahuwah, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob Right, so he's talking about us right now, right? He's talking about we gonna go to the land of our captivity and he gonna save us. He's actually talking about our time right now. But it serves as a prophecy that if we were hearing it in our ancient days, like our, our fathers that was listening to it when Jeremiah was talking about it, they would look at it and be like, oh, he's talking about where Ezekiel is. Because remember, who's in? We got two prophets that we're talking about right now, right? Jeremiah and Ezekiel. Which one is in captivity? Ezekiel. That's right. Ezekiel, good job. Ezekiel is in captivity. So which one is at home? Jeremiah is at home. So Jeremiah is prophesying at the same time that Ezekiel is prophesying. Ezekiel and all the or some of the brethren are over in captivity. So when Jeremiah say the Most High God gonna bring you back from captivity, everybody standing around at that time they gonna look at it like, oh, he talking about our brethren. He talking about our brethren that's out in captivity right now, right? But that's sometimes how some of the prophecy works. It if you listen closely, you'll see it's not talking about what you think it's talking about. Right? What he's talking about now, it applies to us too. It, it applies to our time. Right? Keep going. Watch this. Therefore, fear not, fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, who neither be dismayed, O Israel. I will save thee from a seed and the land of the and your seed from the land of their see captivity. If you can, uh, see if you can reset your internet. Man, or do a speed internet. test or something. Do what? Check the speed or do something. You know what I'm saying? See if that thing running the way it's supposed to be. That thing keep going in and out. Bye. All right. All right. Hold on real quick. Yeah. Right when we, you know, you don't know how to use no dark computer. Yeah, he's just trying to make it look like he's doing something, just smacking some stuff on the thing. You know how he likes. Don't make me have to send Geek Squad over there, boy. You sound like a big time hater right now. Right, you look at it though. We 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 dealing with we dealing with a God that knows everything, right? He see the whole play, and he letting us make decisions, already knowing which decisions that we gonna make, right? A lot of people don't understand that concept. They be looking like, well, if God already know how it's gonna play out. Then is it really free will? Right? They be saying silly stuff like that. But if I'm so smart, I know exactly what you're going to do. Am I really making you do anything? No, you're doing exactly. I'm just, I just know what you're going to do with your darn silly butt. Right? That's how I operate. I've been telling y'all mama all the time. I'm like, yeah, I already know. I already know how you're going to do it. Oh, you're doing, you're doing yes. exactly like I told you. Yeah, yeah. I got it. You know what I'm saying? It's all right. That's, that's <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> hey, with you. A little salt. <laughs> little salt, you know what I'm oh, saying? Oh no, my download tripping. It's at like sixty four point seven right now. That's not good. Sixty four point seven. Yeah. Well, that should be enough to get get what we need to get done. Yeah, but that's like crazy. Maybe because I ain't paid enough. That's crazy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. We got to open up. You know what I'm saying? Open up it. Got to open up an internet fund for brother T here. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Uh, Just for I'll one, you know what I'm saying? Like... One small payment. You know what I'm saying? Brother T is seeing you a personal prayer package. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? You know, they be selling the anointing oil. You know what I'm saying? We'll send you the anointing oil fresh, fresh from Jerusalem. Uh, he ain't typing nothing. That boy just, you know what I'm saying? Boy over there playing the piano. <laughs> All right, where was I? Before I was rudely interrupted. For thus says the Lord. Wait, for I am with thee, says the Lord, to save thee, though I make a full end of all nations where I have scattered thee, yet will mm -hmm. I not make a full end of thee. But I will Right, so what he's saying is, even if I destroy every nation. That I scattered you to. I won't destroy you. Who's that remind you of? 
Come on, we didn't read a lot of books. We got to say we got to we got to bring some of this stuff in memory. Even if I destroy every nation, I won't destroy you. It was like what Abraham? Who's that remind us of? Abraham. Y'all wrong about everything. Y'all yelling out. Good gracious. That's it. Uh, what about what about Lot? Y'all remember Abraham? Right, you remember you got to cut it out. You 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 remember Abraham? He had he had Lot, and Lot chose to go towards the east, and Abraham took the west in the land of Canaan. And all of a sudden, a bunch of the kings got into a big old fight, and they came and they gaffled up the people of Sodom, and that's where Lot went. Right, because Lot was living in Sodom. Abraham saved him, but Lot stayed in Sodom. Y'all remember when the Most High God came down, he said, should I tell Abraham what I'm about to do to Sodom and Gomorrah? And it ended up being a uh, darn fire and brimstone that rained down from Sodom and Gomorrah and destroyed the whole place. But guess who got saved out of Sodom and Gomorrah? Lot got saved out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Matter of fact, Abraham had a conversation with Abraham said, per adventure. When you say per adventure, you just like saying like perhaps, you know what I'm saying? By chance, you know what I'm saying? So he's, he's like, per adventure, if there be 50 righteous people in the city, will you spare the city for that 50 righteous people's sake? Most like God say, if it's 50 of them, I'm going to leave the city alone. So he kept negotiating. He's like, okay, well, what if it's 45? You know what I'm saying? Most like God, I will spare the city for 45. You know what I'm saying? Then he's like, okay, okay, okay. Don't get mad at me. But what if it's 30 out there? He said, even if it's 30, I spare that thing. That boy went all the way down, I think, to 10. 10. Something like that. Most like God said, if it's 10 of them, I will spare the city for the, for, the, the, for the righteousness of the 10. Right? The city got destroyed because it wasn't 10. You know how many it was that was, that was, that was going to be uh, uh, saved? How many? Five. That's close, right? So you had Lot. You had Lot's wife. Lot had two daughters, two virgin daughters, right? And then he had two sons-in-laws, which suggests he had two other daughters that were married, right? The sons-in-law, they laughed him off. They looking at, they looking like, nah, man, we ain't, you know what I'm saying? We ain't got no time for that. They thought he was joking. They thought he was mocking them, right? So we have to assume that they were married to one of his daughters, right? And his daughters and the sons-in-law stayed back, Right? So do you take those four off of it? So I leave Lot, his wife, and his two daughters. That's four people. Right? Four people. And his wife looked back. Angel told him, do not look back. She looked back, turned to a pillar of salt. You know all that salt you, you spreading? That, you know what I'm saying? After she turned into a pillar of salt. So then that's three people. Most High God got him up out of there, sent him out, and still destroyed it. So he didn't spare the city. Because he kept his word. He said, look, if it was 10, I would have spared it. But it wasn't 10. Right? So he ended up destroying the whole city. So Lot is a person that you think of. Whenever the Most High God say, I will, I will destroy the country. He said, even if I destroy the countries where I send you to, I won't make a full end of you. That's what he did with Lot. He destroyed the city that, that Lot went to, but he didn't make a full end of Lot. He spared Lot out of it. Who's somebody else that got spared? Not Abraham. Oh, oh boy, stop just yelling out stuff that don't make sense. That's Abraham, is he you? Two, you learned two names and just going to keep wearing them out. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Who else got stared? You know what I'm saying? Let me see what they got. You heard him say Abraham Lincoln? That's embarrassing. Moses. Well, how Moses get spared? Moses ain't get spared. Not, not, not in the sense that we talking about where a whole city got destroyed and he the only one that made it. Who, who the only, you said what? This, that boy said, look, out of the mouth of Bay, that boy said, didn't it start raining? What else? What else happened out there that started raining? No, no, not that one, but, but I, I see where you're going with it. It started raining and there was a flood. And what happened with that flood? What happened with the flood? What did the flood do to the world? 
it destroyed the whole world, right? But who got spared? What? What did he build? No. Noah, right? Noah, and how many was with him? It was like it was eight of them all together, right? So you had Noah, Noah's wife. Yeah, Noah had a son named Shem. He had a son named Japheth. And he had a son named uh, Ham. And all of them had wives. Right? So it was eight people all together. They all got on the ark. This is Noah's ark, right? They got on the ark with the animals and they got spared. So when you think about it, you have to when the most high when you when we hear the most high God saying stuff, it's supposed to trigger our mind to our history. The most high God tell us, even if I'm going to make a full end of the countries that you go to, it won't be you. Our mind's supposed to trigger up and pick up and be like, OK, hold on, hold on, hold on. He's done something like that before. Right. And we are supposed to start thinking about that. OK. Why are you asking me right now? I wake up the same time you gotta work. You know? Can't can't buy good help. <laughs> now I'm like, keep going. I will not make a full end of thee, but I will correct thee in measure, and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. For says Yahuwah, thy bruises. Another word, what he just said. He said when I, when he say I correct you in measure, he said I'm listen. I ain't gonna make a full end of you, but listen, I'm still gonna get your butt. When he say I'm gonna correct you and measure, that means he's saying, okay, you did, you did. Think about, think about like a ruler, right? When you ruler, you gotta, you trying to measure something with a ruler. You got, don't you gotta line it up real nice? You gotta kind of carefully line it up. And you ever seen somebody like, like you know, what I'm saying, drill something into a wall? They gotta put the ruler right there, and they get the little thing. They put a little mark on the wall, and then they measure it again. They be like, okay, oh, okay, that's right. And they put a little mark. So that's how when he said I I I gotta correct you and measure, he's looking at it like, okay, you did you did 10 inches and three centimeters worth of sin. Guess what? I gotta do 10 inches and three centimeters worth of whooping your darn butt. Right? He said, in the same way that you did it, I gotta measure out that same amount back to your butt. So he's saying. It would be too much if I just made a full end of you, right? So he said, I got to correct. I ain't going to break a full end of you, but I got to correct you in measure, right? Keep going. Watch this. And will not leave thee altogether unpunished. Nobody gets by is what he's saying. Nobody goes unpunished. You know how we be thinking we getting away with something? Think we just sneaky and just, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, nobody saw me and nobody know. Ooh, I'm getting away with this. Nobody gets by. When you be thinking that in your head, just know it's coming. Especially as kids, you know what I'm saying? When kids, you be thinking, look, as a kid, I thought I got away with everything. I used to be like, I don't get caught for nothing. You know what I'm saying? And guess what? No, I didn't get my butt whooped every single time. I got away with a lot of that. As an adult, though, got to deal with this stuff. It's stuff that come back to you. Right? Nobody gets by. And then you got to think about even as an adult, God still ain't done. He still got most stuff that old stuff, old stuff. That's my mama used to be. My mama tell me, I'm going to whoop your butt, boy. You know what I'm saying? And we'd go about, you know what I'm saying? She don't whoop me. We watching TV. She still don't whoop me. And I'd be quiet about it. Like, oh, God. God. You know what I'm saying? And I missed one. Woo! You know what I'm saying? Two, two weeks to go by. Two of them things. She'd be looking at me, and then my sister would say something to her. She'd be like, what you say? I'm about to whoop it. And she'd whoop her butt right on the spot. Whoop her butt. Bow, bow, bow. Then she'd get up, belt around her neck. she say, who next? Oh, heart drop. She'd be like, oh, my goodness gracious. Then she'd look over at you. Oh, yeah, you thought I forgot. Last week when you were doing such and such, such. get your butt in here. Now get that whooping. You save it up. I thought I got by. Mm. Not with mom. You know what I'm saying? She remember every bit of it. When she ready, she gonna lay that punch. But that's how the most I got is. Right? You'll be thinking it's good. He even give you some blessings. Sometimes my mama buy me something. My mama ain't never buy us nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like outside of the bare necessities. You know what I'm saying? But she always make sure we are taken care of. 
But when it comes to like, like extra stuff, like we going to the store, first thing she say, don't ask for nothing. She'll buy you something. You be like, oh, see, she cool. She ain't even tripping on when I got in trouble. We go by. She be like, oh, you thought I forgot. Yak it, yak it, yak it, yak it. Tear that butt up, boy. You know what I'm saying? You get them whooping. You be on your tippy toes running. Woo, boy, I'm telling you. Lighten that butt up. Wow, wow, wow. Y'all don't get it like my mama used to do it. That thing crazy. I be giving y'all a little, you know what I'm saying, a couple little, you know what I'm saying? How many times I got, I got you like a couple. My, my mama used to be there. It felt like an hour. Yak it. Yak it. Yak it. I used to be like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You go, in the, you go in the bathroom, look in the mirror, you know what I'm saying? I can't believe you did. That thing be bad, I'm telling you. You know what I'm saying? But that's how it works. That's how the most high God is. Right, most high God, he'll hold on to it. He'll hold on, and let you sit. Remember, we is in the wilderness. How many times? How many times we sin against him in the wilderness? He said ten times. He said ten times. He said this ten times. Y'all rebelled against me. We didn't know he was counting. He letting us slide. He letting all this stuff go by. We think we getting away with it. We think it's okay. All of a sudden, he's had enough. He wake up and just be like. Y'all rebelled against me this 10 times. Ain't give us a warning. Ain't give nothing. Because I shouldn't have to. That's what he's looking at. I shouldn't have to. It should be enough that you think that you sliding. But nobody gets by. The punishment is always going to come. You always going to have to deal with the consequence. Nobody gets by. So keep that in your mind. When that little sneaky stuff pop in your mind, you be like, why even going to hey, You think. You think. You know what I'm saying? You got to pay for every little thing you do. You're going to be sitting there, God forgave me for it. He did. He did forgive you. Guess what? You still got to pay for that thing. And he forgave you. And you still got to pay for it. Because what's the wages of sin? Death. Death. If he forgive you, best you got is he going to resurrect you from the dead. But guess what you still got to do? Die. die. You still got to die. You know what I'm saying? Now, he'll bring you back, but you still got to die. You still got to deal with all the consequences of everything you do. Still got to die. The best you could do is the man to bring you back. That's all that we can hope for. You know what I'm saying? So you might want to, you know what I'm saying? Just live your life righteous so you can avoid some of the trouble, the pain that going come, to come with this life. Y'all get whooping because that's what the book say. Books say spare the world, spare spoil the darn child, boy. No, it don't. It says, he who spares the rod hates his son. And then, what did it say after that? I don't remember the spell part. Yeah, it's a different one. It's a different verse. They both in there. Fine. Maybe I was just saying, you know, so that's, sorry, yeah, what? that's my, uh, my, my anger coming in right there. <laughs> Keep going. For that said, the Lord. said, ain't nothing like a later on whoop. <laughs> mm. <laughs> For that says the Lord, thy bruise is incurable and thy wound is grievous. There is none to plead thy cause and that thou may be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicines. All thy lovers have forgotten thee. They seek thee not. For I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, for the multitude of thine iniquity, because thy sins were increased. Why mm -hmm. criest thou for thine affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable. For the multitude of thy iniquity, because thy sins were increased, I have done these things unto thee. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. And they spoil thee shall be spoiled, and all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. Wow. All right, so he told her, he said, everybody who spoiled me, us, going to be spoiled. So in other words, everybody who stole from us and took our stuff, going to be, gonna be uh, stolen from, right? And the ones that took us into captivity, they going to go into captivity. It's the same thing. Jeremiah, he going to say this again later in Jeremiah and in in Revelation, say the same thing also, right? Keep going. For I will restore health unto thee, and will get and will heal thee of thy wounds, says Yahuwah, because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeks after. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tent 
and have mercy on his dwelling places, and the city shall be builded upon her own heap, and the palace shall remain after the manner thereof. Out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. And I will multiply them that, and they shall not be few. I will also glorify them, and they shall not be small. Their children also shall be as aforetime, and their congress and their congregation shall be established before me, and I will punish all that oppress them. And their nobles shall be of themselves, and their governor shall proceed from the midst of them. And I will cause him to draw near, and he shall approach unto me. For who is this that engaged his heart to approach? He shall. He said, "Who is this? What? Watch this. Say it again." And he shall approach unto me. For who is this that engaged his heart to approach unto me? Says Yahuwah. Right. So notice the difference here. When Jeremiah he's asking the question. Who is this who engaged his heart to approach unto Yahuwah? And what did he ask Ezekiel? What did he tell Ezekiel? He said, they put idols in their heart. Do they think that they can inquire of me? Right? You have to understand that these two prophets are prophesying at the same time. They're saying similar things, but they in two totally different places. It ain't like they calling each other on the phone. Right? Most High God is just talking to both of them, but you'll see that they're saying so many of the same things. Right? Keep going. Watch this. The fierce anger of the Lord shall not return until he has done it and until he has performed the intents of his heart. In the latter days, he shall consider it. That's how you know it's talking about us. Because he said in the latter days, right? The latter days means the end days. Right? The ends at the, 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 the days at the end. The last days. Right. He's saying at that point, you'll think about it. He said, you'll consider it. He said, what I'm telling you right now at the end, you'll think about it. You'll consider it. All right. Keep going. How's it? Keep going. Chapter 31. At the same time, says Yahuwah, will I be the God of all the families of Israel and they shall be my people. So Just now when he says Israel. at the same time. I wanted, to, I wanted to read 30 so we understood it. When he says, at the same time, what is he talking about? In the last days. He said, and he's talking about the last day. Because he said, in the latter days, you will consider it. He just got done talking about the prophecy of bringing us back and punishing the people that, that oppress us right now. Remember we talked about oppression? Boys, right? We talked about oppression and what oppression means. So the people that's oppressing us right now, He's he said, listen, you're going to consider it because I'm going to punish them and I'm going to bring y'all back and I'm going to exalt y'all. Right? That's what he's going to do for us. And he's saying at the same time, what? At the same time, says the Lord, will I be the God of all the families of Israel and they shall be my people. Mm -hmm. Thus says the Lord, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Israel, when I went to cause them to rest. The Lord has appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, he said, I've loved you with what? An everlasting love. Keep going. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Again, I will build thee, and thou shalt be built, O virgin of Israel. Thou shalt again be adored with thy tabrets, and shalt go forth into the dances to them that make merry. Thou shalt yet plant vines in the mountains of Samaria. The plant shall plant, and shall eat them as common things. For there shall be a day that the watchman upon the Mount Ephraim shall cry, Arise, and let us go up into Zion unto the Lord our God. Thus says the Lord, Sing with gladness for Jacob, and shout among the chief of the nations. Publish ye, praise ye, and say, O Lord, save thy people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, mm -hmm. I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the coast of the earth, and with them the blind and the lame, and the woman with child and her that travaileth with child together. A great company shall return here. They shall come with weeping, and the supplication will I lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of water in the straight way, wherein they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of Yahuwah, O ye nations, and declare it in the isles afar off, and say, He that scattered Israel will gather him, and keep him as a shepherd does his flock. Right, he said, He that scattered Israel will gather them and he's gonna keep them like a shepherd keeps his flock. Right, keep going, watch this. 
For the Lord has redeemed Jacob, ransomed him from the hand of him that was a stranger, that was a stronger than he. Therefore, they shall come and sing in the height of Zion, shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord for wheat and for wine and for oil and for the young of the flock and the herd. And their soul shall be as a watered garden, and they shall not sorrow any more at all. Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance, both young men and old together. For I will turn their mourning into joy and make them rejoice from their sorrow. And I will set and I will satiate the soul of the priests with fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, says you. Thus says mm -hmm. you, a void in Rama, lamenting and bitter weeping, Rachel weeping for her children, refused to be comforted for her children because they were not. Thus says Yahuwah, refrain thy voice from weeping and thine eyes from tears, for they work, for thy work shall be rewarded, says Yahuwah, and they shall come again from the land of the enemy. And there is hope in thine end, says Yahuwah, that thy children shall come again to their own border. I have surely right. heard you, friend. So now he's talking to our fathers. So at this point, he's talking to our fathers. He's telling our fathers, our fathers who are dead, right? He's saying, hey, don't weep. They going to come. He's talking about us. We're going to end up returning to the land. Right? Keep going. Watch this. Truly, after I was turned, I repented. But I have surely heard Ephraim bemoaning himself thus. Thou hast chastised me, and I was chastised, and a bullock as a bullock is unaccustomed, unaccustomed to the yoke, turn thou me and I shall be turned, for thou art the Lord my God. Surely after that I was turned, I repented, and after that I was instructed, I smote upon my thigh. I was ashamed, yeah, even confounded, because I did bear the reproach of my youth. Is Ephraim, is Ephraim my dear son? Is he a pleasant child? For since I spake against him, I do earnestly remember him still. Therefore my bowels are troubled for him. I will surely have mercy upon him, says Yahuwah. Set thee up waymarks, make thee high heaps, set thine heart toward the highway, even the way which thou went wentest. Turn again, O virgin Israel, turn again to these cities. How long will you go about, O thy, o thou backsliding daughter? For the Lord mm -hmm. has created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. Thus shall the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, as ye. They shall use this speech in the land of Judah and in the cities thereof when I shall bring in their captivity. The right. Lord so he said, oh, he said a new thing is going to be in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. In other words, shall be shall, uh, a man is going to be inside of a woman. That's not new. Right. That happens all the time that women give birth to male children. So you have to understand that what he's saying is it's going to be something new about a woman giving birth to a male child, right? He's telling you something new going to happen when it comes to a woman giving birth to a male child. And he's talking about, he's talking about the mother of Yahushua, right? Talking about the most high God putting his spirit in a woman without her, without her lying with a man, right? Without her being defiled at all with a man, a, 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 a man, uh, uh, the most high God put his spirit in her and caused her to be pregnant, right? That was something new. All right, keep going. Thus says you who have host, God of Israel, as yet they shall use this speech in the land of Judah and in the seas thereof, when I shall bring again their captivity. The Lord bless thee, O habitation of justice and mountain of holiness. And there shall dwell in Judah itself and in the cities thereof together husbandmen and they that go forth with flocks. For I have satiated the, the weary soul. I have replenished every sorrowful soul. Upon this I awaked and beheld and my sleep was sweet unto me. Behold, the days come, says Yahuwah, that I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of man and with the seed of beast. And it shall come to pass that I have watched over them to pluck up, to pluck down and to throw down and to destroy and to, and to afflict. So will I watch over them to build and to plant, says Yahuwah. In those days they shall say no more. The fathers have eaten a sour grape and the children's Pay teeth attention. are on edge. But he everyone... Said, She'll Look, in that time, he it. said, they will say no more that the fathers have eaten what? Eaten sour grapes. And then what happened? And the children's teeth are set on edge. Right. So what that means, right, right now, we got a lot of candy at our disposal. So, you know what I'm saying? 
Like I might eat a lot of candy. I might like candy. I can go buy candy if I want it. I might eat it. If I eat a bunch of candy, does that make the hard teeth bad? It's gonna make my teeth bad, right? So he what he's saying is sour grapes would be like the equivalent, cause you know, like there's there's grapes that got a lot of juice and sugar in it that can ruin your teeth too. Fruits are like that too, right? So you you eat a bunch of sour grapes, it'll mess up your teeth. And so he, the Most High God is asking the question, or he's, he's telling the people, he said, there was a saying going around that people would say is, man, the dad eats sour grapes and it affects the children's teeth. Basically saying that the child has to pay for the sins of the father. Right? Because the dad messed up, the Most High God going to punish the son for the dad. So now the Most High God is saying, ain't nobody going to say that no more. Watch, say it, watch it, say it again. Yeah, God, he, the most high asked uh, Ezekiel, like, hey, why y'all keep saying that? Like, why does Israel say that? It's the same thing. We'll go there next. Behold, it's, another, they, it's another example of they saying the same thing. Watch. Ah, right, yeah, we're gonna go there next. Watch this. This is uh this is uh this is Jeremiah saying it. Then we're gonna look at uh, Ezekiel saying it next. But everyone shall wait. In those days, they shall say no more. The fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. But everyone shall die for his own iniquity. Every man that eateth the sour grape, his teeth shall be set on edge. Right. So whoever eats the grapes shall be set on edge. The same way the grapes there is just a parable for sin. Whoever commits the sin, who going to pay for it? A person. The person who commit the sin. Right. And that's what he, that's the point that he's trying to make. He said, don't say that no more. Ain't nobody going to say that no more. Ain't nobody paying for nobody else's sin. The one who commit the sin, that's why I'm holding accountable for the sin. Right? Let's go to, uh, let's go to, uh, do, 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 do. let's go to Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 1. These boys saying the same thing. They in two totally different places, but they saying the same thing. That's why you can't let these people lie to you and talk about this book ain't real. These two different books. They found they found each of these books in different places in the world. These two separate men, different time. They in two totally separate lands. Right? We ain't even we don't even know if they met each other before. They might have because they are both priests. You know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying? It's like two separate people. They just running their mouth, writing stuff down, and that thing line up. Saying the same thing. Most high guys, how you know, most high God talking to both of them. It's Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 1. And the Lord came unto me, saying, What mean ye that you use this proverb concerning the land of Israel, saying, The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge? Right? You see how he's saying the exact same thing that Jeremiah was talking about? Except this time he asked them. See, he told Jeremiah, he said, They ain't going to say that no more. Right? And then now with Ezekiel, he's saying, Ask the people. You know what I'm saying? What do y'all mean when y'all say that? Right? Watch this. Ezekiel going to break it down for you, though. As I live, says Yahuwah God, ye shall not have occasion anymore to use this proverb in Israel. Behold, mm -hmm. all souls are mine. As the soul of the father, also the soul of the son is mine. Mm -hmm. The soul that sins, it shall die. Mm -hmm. But if a man be just and do which is lawful and right, and has not eaten upon the mountains, neither has lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, neither has defiled his neighbor's wife, neither has come near to a menstruous woman, and has not oppressed any, but has restored to the debtor his pledge, has spoiled none by violence, has given his bread to the hungry, and has covered the naked with the garment. He that has not given forth upon usury, neither has taken any increase, that has withdrawn his hand from iniquity, had ex executed true judgment between man and man, has walked in my statutes and kept my judgments to so truly he is just. He shall surely right? live. He gave you a full life. list. Or he gave you a long list of things that he looks at as a person that's doing just. Right? He said, the person that does all these things, that man is just. Right? Watch this. Watch what you say after that. If he beget a son that is a robber, a shedder of blood, and that does like does the like to any one of these things, and that does not any of those duties, but even has eaten upon the mountains and defiled his neighbor's wife, oppressed the poor, the needy, and is spoiled by violence, has not restored the pledge, have lifted up his eyes to the idols, has committed abomination, 
has given forth upon usury and has taken increase, shall he then live? He shall not live. He has done all these abominations. He shall surely die. His blood shall be upon him. Right? So what he's explaining, he's saying, listen, the pops is righteous. Right? He ain't came near a minstrel's woman. He ain't defiled nobody's wife. The man a stand-up guy. He does judgment between man and man. In other words, if these people, these people fighting with each other, he try to make peace. He'd be like, look, 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 this is the right way to handle this. You should do this and you should do this. He's saying these are the signs of a righteous man. He's like, man, if I found a man like that, that man is righteous. But if that same righteous man had a baby and that boy grew up and when he grew up, he was a robber, a stealer. He defiling people wives and he just a sinner. Then the son is going to die. He's saying, shall he live just because his, his pops is righteous? Is that fair? If it pop do all the right thing and his son is a sinner. Should the son live just because the pops do all the right things? He said, no, the son going to die for his sin. And the pops going to live for his sin. Watch this. Keep going. Yeah, watch how the Most High God lay it out for you. Notice how he started with the righteous dad. Remember, he started off saying, if the dad eats sour grapes, the kid's teeth are going to be set on edge, right? So you kind of think about it in a negative way. Right. That's everybody ready for that negative way. So he said, well, let me flip it for you. What if the dad did the right thing? Would it make the teeth? If the dad brushed his teeth every day, is it going to make his kids teeth more clean? Everybody going to look at that and be like, no, nah, that's ridiculous. Right. So he, he flipped. It. He said, if the dad is the most righteous person in the world, did that mean that the kid get off for all the foolishness he be doing? Right. Then he keep going. Watch this. Now, lo, if he beget a son that sees all his father's sins, which he has done, and considers and does not such like, that has not eaten upon the mountains, neither has lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, has not defiled his neighbor's wife, neither has oppressed any, has not withheld in the pledge, neither has spoiled by violence, but has given his bread to the hungry, and has covered the naked with a garment, that has taken off his hand from the poor, that has not received usury nor increase, has executed my judgment, has walked in my statutes. He shall not die for the iniquity of his father. He shall surely live. As for his father, because he cruelly oppressed, spoiled his brother by violence, and did that which is not good among his people, lo, even he shall die in his iniquity. Yet you say, why? Does not, does not the son bear the iniquity of the father? When the son has done that which is lawful and right and has kept all my statutes and done them, he shall surely live. The soul that sins, it shall die. The son. Right. So he's setting something straight because there's something that people get confused. Right. Some people see this as a contradiction who don't know the scripture. Right. They get confused because Moses told us, I think it's in the 34th chapter of uh, Exodus. Moses told us that. The Most High God would visit the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation. That means for three and four generations, the Most High God will visit the iniquity of the father on them. Right. But at the same time, the soul that sins is the soul that gets the punishment for that sin. The punishment for sin is death. So he's saying the soul that sins will die. So what he's explaining is everybody got to deal with the consequences of sin, right? If I sin, my children have to deal with the consequences of my sin. However, the punishment that goes with sin is death. I'm the only one that got to deal with that, right? So when I sin, I have to face death and I have to face resurrection if I'm righteous. And my son, I can't do no righteousness that's going to cause him to not have to face death or cause him to get right, uh, get the resurrection. Right. It only comes if he turns away from his sin. So that's how the most high God, that's what he's trying to explain. He's saying, hey, let me set something straight. The soul that sin is the soul that will die. Keep going. Watch this. He also said the same thing in Exodus 2 when he told Moses, he was like, the one that sins against me going to die. Uh, mm -hmm. When he said, uh, 
what Moses was saying. Uh, he was like, you can see my back, but you can't see my face. But, so he said the same thing in Exodus. He cleared it up in Exodus too. Yet ye say, why? Not the son bear the iniquity of the father? When the son has done that which is lawful and right and has kept all my statutes and has done them, he shall surely live. The soul that sins, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he has committed and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. All his transgressions that he has committed, they shall not be they shall not be mentioned unto him in his righteousness that he has done. He shall live. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die? Says all right, he asked the question. He said, do I have any pleasure at all that the wicked shall die? Both our guy looking like I do not get pleasure at all because y'all be sinning and I'm going to kill y'all. He looked like I'm not licking my chops waiting to kill all y'all. I don't have no pleasure at all in that. Right? Keep going. Watch this. And not that he should return from his ways and live. But when the righteous turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity and does according to all that the abominations of the wicked man does, shall he live? All his righteousness that he has done shall not be mentioned in his trespass that he has trespassed. And in his sin that he has sinned, in them shall he die. Yet he say, the way of Yahuwah is not equal. Here now, right? When he say not equal, he's talking about fair, right? That's kind of how we would look at the word fair, right? He's saying, but yet they say the most high God ain't fair. That's what he's kind of saying right now. He's saying, oh, but y'all say, so I explain all this. The son is responsible for what the son do. The dad is responsible for what the dad do. But y'all say I'm not fair, right? Keep going. Watch this. Here now, O house of Israel, is not my way equal? Are not your ways unequal? Mm -hmm. When a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity and dies in them for his iniquity, that he shall that he has done, shall he die. Again, when a wicked man turns away from his wickedness that is committed and does that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. Because he considers and turns away from all the transgressions that he has committed, he shall surely live. He, he turns die. away from some of the transgressions because he considers and turns away from all his transgressions. And he has Y'all have to understand what it means to repent. All right, people be talking like, yeah, I repented from every sin that God showed me each time. You know what I'm saying? I never keep doing the same one. No, 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 no. You got to repent, not just from the sins he showed you, right? He didn't show you all of them. Don't put, don't put that lie on him, right? Every sin you got to turn away from. And you got to settle in your mind that that's what you're doing. I've turned away from every sin. Right? Keep going. Yet says the house of, wait, because he considers and turns away from all his transgressions that he has committed, he shall surely live. He shall not die. Yet says the house of Israel, the way of the Lord is not equal. O house of Israel, are not my ways equal? Are not your ways unequal? Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel. Everyone according to his ways, says you who are God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have right, no so notice he said, turn away from all your transgressions. And he said, by doing that, it will make you a what? And make and from your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. No, we yes. skip something. Go back. And cast away from you all your transgressions whereby you have transgressed and make you a new heart and a new spirit. Right? He said a new heart and a new spirit. What is he talking about? Repentance. He's talking about the new covenant. You have to, So, like, we know this now. We know Yahushua coming. We know he's going to die from our sin. But you got to look at it from, from the perspective of what, what he's saying at that time. Anybody hearing this at that time is like, so, whoa, 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 how does this work? How does this work? If I turn away from my sin, you mean to tell me I'm going to save myself from death? So they, they thinking about this in terms of our law. Our law says that you have a rock 
and your butt gonna get smacked upside the head with it if you commit certain sins, right? You defile a man's wife, that you you set for death. So you have to understand, according to our law, this might not make sense to people. Do you mean to tell me I can just repent and turn from it and I save myself alive? Right? As long as I repent from this, most high God going to forgive everything behind me. That's not what he's saying according to the law of Moses. Law of Moses will not allow for what, what, what Ezekiel is talking about right now. And the law of Moses don't say nothing about giving you a new heart, right? And a new spirit. But Jeremiah does because they talking at the same time. Right, finish this verse out and then let's go to uh, this chapter out and then uh, let's go to Jeremiah. For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dies, says Yahuwah God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live. This is Jeremiah. We're going to jump back where we left off. Jeremiah chapter 31, probably verse 30. We're on 31, 31. We're on 31? Yeah, 31, 31. All right, so this is uh, Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31. I'm going to talk about the new covenant. Watch this. Behold, the days come, says Yahuwah, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Jake, Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant right. would break, although I was a husband unto them, says you. Right. So he said, I'm going to make a new covenant. And he said, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers, which their fathers did what? They did break. So he telling he making it very clear for me. I'm going to make a covenant with you. It's going to be different from the one that I made with your fathers. They broke that thing, right? They made a mess of that thing, but I'm going to make a new one and it's not going to be a same to, according to the same covenant. Those are the but you got a lot of our brothers, they go out here, I hear it every single day. They be, they be slipping that thing, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the renewed covenant. It's the renewed covenant, right? And it's just a mess. People teach it that way. They teach it as a renew. They think they smart. They look inside of their Strong's concordance, and then Strong's just says the word translated here as new can also be translated as renewed. And so they see that, and they have a field day with that thing. Like, oh, we're going to say renewed instead. Like, no, that's not honest. That's not an honest translation. Right? Every time you look at the word that's translated there as new, guess what it means every other time that you look at it? But yeah. what gets them, even if... Even if they have an argument on that, he literally just said, not according to the one that I made of Israel. So, like, that kind of kills that theory anyway. Yeah, how it even makes sense if you say renewed, right? Like Brother T just said, it's a renew. I'm making a renewed covenant, not according to the one, the old one. Right? Not according to the one I made with your father. Don't even make sense. Even if, it, even if you say that makes sense, you still saying it's different. Right? And that's the point that we have to acknowledge. We have to accept that. It ain't nothing no... There's no shame in the Most High God making a different covenant with us. Right? That's what he's saying. These people have to make that argument because they don't understand the role of the law when it comes to what Yahushua did. They're confused by Paul's writings and they don't want to admit it. Some of them still say, no, nah, Paul, everything Paul said was true. And if, and if you press them on some of the stuff Paul said, they can't deal with it. They'll be like, well, Paul, you know what I'm saying? They're going to start off saying, Whole Bible is facts. Whole Bible is true. I take everything that the Bible say. Then you get the press on what Paul's saying. They be like, well, you know, Paul sometimes spoke on his own accord. Well, if you don't shut your darn mouth, just say you don't know the law. Just say you don't understand the scripture. Right? Because he told you, he said, not according. Okay. So when we when we read and the most high God said, I might drive you to every country. And even if I make a full end of the country. I won't make a full end of you, right? When we said that, I asked y'all a question. I said, what does that make y'all? Who does that make y'all think about? And then we started talking about all the different things, right? So now if I tell you the most high God said, I'm going to make a covenant with you, but not according to the 
other covenant, not according to the covenant I made with your father. What does that make you think of? He tell them we got to do it a different way. He said, don't do it that way. We doing it a different way. You remember we had a prophet grab a uh, grab first King chapter 13. It's first King chapter 13. Give me verse one. This is first Kings chapter 13 verse one. Then we're going to come on back to Jeremiah and try to wrap this up. And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of Yahuwah unto, Beth, unto Bethel, and Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. And he cried against the altar in the word of Yahuwah and said, O altar, altar, thus says Yahuwah, behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name, and upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn, in, that burn incense upon thee, and men's bones shall be burned upon thee. Y'all remember when Jeremiah actually did that? Josiah. I mean, Josiah actually did that. Right. Right. This was the prophet. This is the man of God that came. Y'all probably remember we read about this prophet. This is the man of God that came before him. But watch what the most high God told him. Watch this. The, and he gave a sign the same day saying, this is the sign which Yahuwah has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be ripped. And the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. And it shall come to pass when the king Jeroboam heard the saying, of the man of God, which he cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him. And his hand, which he put forth against him, dried up so that he could not dried up just like that. He put his hands where, Hey, get that boy. His hand just dried up, it became hard and scribbly. You know what I'm saying? That boy's hand just stuck like that. He walking around just like this. Hand just stuck. You know what I'm saying? Dried up, hard, scribbly. You know what I'm saying? Watch it. Keep going. The altar also was ripped and the ashes poured out from the altar according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of Yahuwah. And the mm -hmm. king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now to the face of Yahuwah thy God and pray for me that my hand may be restored unto me again. And the man besought God, and the man of God besought the Lord, and the king's hand was returned unto him again, restored unto him again, and become as it was before. The king said unto the man of God, Come home with me and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. The man of God said unto the king, Why, Watch what he say to him. If you will give me half thine house, I will not go in with thee. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For so it was charged to be by the Lord, saying, Eat no bread, eat no water, nor turn again by the same way that you came. So he went he another said, way. You can't turn again by the same way that you came. In other words, the way you got here, you can't take that same way back. Right? That's how it is with us for the law. He said, your father's already made a mess of that. I can't send you back. You bet not go back that, sit down that same road. I'm going to make a new covenant with you. We're going a different path. Not according to the one I did with your fathers. Right? Keep going. Watch this. So he went another way and returned not by the way. He did. He went the same way, even though the most high God just told him not to. He went another way. Book said he went another way. Keep going. Uh, there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel, and his son came and told him of the works that the man of God had done by the day, uh, that day in Bethel, and the mm -hmm. words which he had spoken unto the king. Them they told also to their father, and their father said unto them, Which way did he go? For his sons had seen what way that the man of God went, which came from mm -hmm. him. And he said unto his sons, Saddle my donkey. So they saddled the donkey, and he ran, and he, and he rode thereon. And he went after the man of God and found him sitting under an oak and said unto him, Are you the man of God that came from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said unto him, Come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with thee, nor go with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water with thee in this place. For it was said unto me by the word of Yahuwah, Thou shalt eat no bread nor drink no water there, nor turn again and go by the way that thou came. He said unto him, I am a prophet also, just like as you are. And the angel spake unto me by the word of the Yahuwah, saying, Bring him back with thee into thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied. But what happened? He, he said he did what now? Lied unto him. Book said he lied to him, a false prophet. 
Right. This is what we're up against. This man, a legitimate prophet, heard from the Most High God, talked to Jeroboam. He is going back a different way, just like the Most High God told him. God stopped. And he said, listen, I'm a prophet, too. Most High God told me to tell you to come back and eat. But the Most High God already told him, don't have no bread and don't have no water in this place and go back a different way. So he went and he ate with the brother. Right? And it wasn't until, uh, jump down to maybe verse 29, maybe 28. And the prophet took up the carcass of the man of God and laid it upon the donkey and brought it back. Right? So the man, the, the man of God died, got killed by a lion. Right? He got killed. You remember the lion? Remember the lion was, I think it was lying with a lion with a donkey? The donkey right there. Right? Lion, he ripped, he ripped the man off the off of the donkey. Donkey right there chilling. Donkey is safe with the lion. Lion don't even go after the donkey. It only kill him. Don't even eat him. It just rip him apart. Right? So now the 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 prophet took this man, the prophet that lied, he took this man, put his bones, or took his body, and then did what with him? Let's read it. The prophet took up the carcass of the man of God and laid it upon the donkey and brought it back. And the prophet came to the city to mourn and to bury him. Watch this. And he laid his carcass in his own grave and they mourned over him saying, Alas, my brother. He said, Alas, my brother. Watch this. It came to pass after he had buried him that he spake to his son saying, When I am dead. He told his sons. When I am dead, bury me in the sepulcher wherein this man of God is buried. Lay my bones. He said, Bury me with this man. I want y'all to feel what he's saying. He's saying, this is the prophet. He lied to him. The man listened to him and got himself killed. Right? He said, look, sons, circle around me, pay attention. Alas, when I die, bury me with this man. For what reason? Lay my bones beside his bones. For the saying which he cried by the word of Yahuwah against the altar in Bethel, and against all the houses of the high place, which are in the cities of Samaria, shall surely come to pass. He said everything this man said going to come to pass. He, In other words, he's saying this man deserves honor. Bury me with him because this man deserves honor. He's legitimate. You have to understand that these people might not respect you until you die. These people will wrong you. They will snake you. And it'll be after you die that they will give glory to the most high God for you after you die. Everything you say while you living, people play you. They discount you. They, they dismiss you. You don't mean nothing. They call you stupid for believing the book. You crazy. You radical. They say all this stuff. Don't respect you. Don't think nothing of you. Buck against rebel. Everything you say. Right? It's some of these brothers, they own household. They own family. I'm in argument with, my, I spent years in argument with my own family. But guess what? When I die, whole thing gonna change. But that's how it works. I already got my mind set up that way. I don't even, I'm not even thinking about what's happening right now. You go crazy trying to think about what's happening right now. My mind's already set up. Oh, okay, I know how this thing works. Don't nothing even happen to I die. Let me tell you, last video might have had 15 views on YouTube, right? When I die, y'all willing these videos still around? Y'all just, you know what I'm saying? When we get into the kingdom, y'all just tell me what the video did after I did, when after I was gone. Because I know this the truth, but it don't work that way. Ain't nobody listening to the man of God. You still living? That's crazy. How you think they felt about Jeremiah when Jeremiah was living? They punching him in the face, right? Putting him in jail. After he died, or what happened? They came to pass. Uh, let's, <laughs> Let's get his book. Let's read it. Man, this boy was talking some truth. That's how it works.
It don't mean nothing. When the most I got ain't got nothing for you while you living. That's crazy. Everything we living for come after the death. We got to look forward to the resurrection. All this stuff ain't nothing. This stuff ain't nothing. Most High God going to use whatever he going to use. You ain't got to see it. If you think you got to see it happen, then you ain't got enough faith. Right? The faith you got to have got to extend past what we're doing right now. What we're doing right now is little. It's little, 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 small stuff what we're doing right now. It's what happens after this is big. Right? Let's jump back into it. This is, uh, this is, uh, where are we at? Where are we at? Uh, Jeremiah chapter 31. 31, 32. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 32. He said, not according to the way that your fathers went. He said, I'm giving you a new covenant because your fathers broke that thing. I'm not doing it according to the same terms of them covenants. Keep going. Watch this. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, says you. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says you, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their mm -hmm. God and they shall be my people. Mm -hmm. and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, no, Yahuwah, for they all shall know me. From the right. So this is the new covenant. So now you got to get. So. Look, all the Hebrews that's watching right now, they all look at me. They're like, man, that, that brother's just a Christian. Talking about, you know what I'm saying? It's not a covenant. You know what I'm saying? It's a renewed covenant, brother. Don't you know that? They looking at me. They calling me a Christian right now, right? Now, now I got to get the Christians. So the Christians like, yeah, that's right. Christians with me right now. Christians like new covenant. New covenant creature. You know what I'm saying? That's how the Christians said. But now we got to get the Christians. Because watch what Jeremiah say right here. He said what? And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, No, Yahuwah, for they all shall know me. From the least so, how you in church learning about the Bible, learning about God? Got a pastor saying, Won't you come? If anybody wants to know God on a, on a, you want to have a personal relationship with God, come up here and just say this prayer with me. Right? You got a pastor literally claiming that he's teaching you about God when the books say, When you a new covenant creature, he said, nobody going to have to learn about God. Say, no more will anybody teach anybody about the Most High God. And why? They all going to know him. Book said, everybody going to know him. From what? From the least of them to the, for the least, but from the least of them to the greatest of them, says Yahuwah. Because he's talking them. about the kingdom. He's talking about the king. He's not talking about now. And he's not talking about the kingdom when we, when we go back home either. He talking about that kingdom after resurrection. Y'all have to understand how the timeline work. The timeline work with we in captivity in America, in Brazil, in Canada, all the different places that we at, right? In Africa, in Saudi Arabia, all the different places where our people are scattered, we in captivity. He's going to come get us from all the different nations. Every one of them. He's going to bring us into the wilderness. We're going to be regular people just like we are today. Walking through the wilderness, we're going to go back into the land. Gentiles is going to help us do it. They're going to pay for our tickets. They're going to look out for us. And they're going to be doing it because it's all types of plagues hitting the world. And they gonna, it's going to come to their mind like, oh, crap, these people are the people of God. And we've messed up. They're going to have a level of guilt, and they're going to want to escape all of this crazy stuff that's happening in the world. They're going to come, and they're going to bring us. They're going to make sure that we get back to our land. They're going to pay for our land and they're going to put their own blood, sweat and tears in our land to rebuild it for us. Right. And they are going to willingly serve us there. Right. They're going to they're going to make sure that we taken care of and they're going to serve us. This, and they're going to be in captivity to us, not anywhere near the same type of captivity they put us in because we are righteous people. Our laws wouldn't even allow for it. Right. But they're going to be in captivity to us. They're going to be servants to us and they're going to be serving amongst us as brothers. They're going to be captivity, but they're going to be amongst us as brothers. Hebrews don't like that part, right? They're going to be amongst us as brothers. We're going to go to the land. We're going to be in the land. Still regular people. No resurrection. Just regular people. You die. We're going to have kids. Kids going to grow up. All types of stuff, right? The whole time, the rest of the world is going to be looking at, wait a minute. They got a tree that every month it bears a one tree. Every month bears a different type of fruit and that thing heals and they got water. They got a spring that comes out of their land 
And that thing is healing the water. It's all types of plagues that's going to be hitting the water, right? And it's going to make the water where all the fish die, according to Revelation. So people ain't going to be able to go eat fish, ain't going to be done, because everything going to be poisoned in certain places. Yeah. It's going to be hard to actually find good food. But our water going to have fishes all like all the fish going to come to our water. So guess how easy it's going to be for us to get a fish? We just going to walk right out there, grab it right out of the water. All the rest of these people, they got to drive, they got to. Ride, drive their little boat all over the water looking for a good spot in the water that ain't poison just to get some fish. Some of them going to try to eat the fish and get sick because the, the fish were poison. But then they going to learn that right by us, all the fish is right there. It is so easy. Why they spending money and resources just to try to get. So how do you think that's going to make the rest of the world feel? They're going to be jealous. They're going to be mad. They're going to be looking like, first of all, these Negroes used to work for us. Right? It's gonna be there's gonna be all the people that 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 are still rebellious. They're gonna be like these Negroes used to work for us. They used to be in captivity to us. They used to be in our land. They used to be the bottom. And now they over there and they got all these resources. They got the only fresh water. They got the only clean water. Then they're gonna go over there. And when they go over there, they're gonna go over there to make some war with us. And it's not just gonna be two of them, it's gonna be a whole bunch of it's gonna be all the nations. And they gonna go. And that's when Yahushua comes back. Because we are going to be scared just like we always are. We're going to be looking like, oh, my goodness, they're going to kill us. At this point, the prophet Jeremiah had already came back. He already didn't turned our hearts. He didn't told us what tribe we from because we ain't going to know. So you're going to be like, yeah, you from this tribe and you from this tribe and you from this tribe. We ain't going to know until he told us. Right. So we're going to be happy. And then these people going to try to make war with us. We're going to be suited and booted, ready to go to war with them, thinking we about to fight. And right when it's time to fight, most of our God going to send Yahushua. Yahushua going to pop back up. He going to come out of Edom killing folk. These people going to be falling, dropping dead. Then he going to kill all these people. All these people going to die that rebelled against them. Right? And at that point, the resurrection occurs. And that point, the new kingdom comes down. Right. And when we're dealing with that. That's when we have a new heart in the law written on our heart and everybody who gets resurrected won't have to be taught about the most high God, because guess what? Guess everyone who gets resurrected. Guess where they came from. They came from here. And they came from somebody who served the most high God and kept the faith until they died. It came from somebody who repented and said, you know what? I'm about to serve the most high God. Why would you have to teach that person about God? They repented, they died, and now they resurrected. And that's going to be the only people in the kingdom. And that's why he said from the least to the greatest, because he told you in Matthew chapter five, it's going to be least in the kingdom and it's going to be greatest in the kingdom. Christian better shut their darn mouth. You ain't no darn new crest testament. Uh, new. Was it new covenant creature? The new covenant haven't happened yet. When Yahushua sat down with the disciples, he said, look, eat this bread, didn't he? And then he said, drink this blood. He said, drink the wine is my blood. And then he said, I'm not going to drink it until it's in my kingdom anew. You always seal a covenant by eating and drinking. Because he didn't seal that darn covenant with them. He gave it to him for something to do until he come back. He said, do it. Paul told us to do it in remembrance. When the man come back, we're going we gonna to seal the covenant. And that's going to be the new covenant. Everything we're doing right now is by faith. You ain't got nothing. Paul told you if you had it, it wouldn't be hope. And as always, the Hebrew is wrong and the Christian is darn wrong. Stop calling yourself silly stuff and just follow what the books say. Keep going. The Sharon says she hopes she's from Judah. For I will forgive their iniquity. I will remember their sin no more. Thus says Yahuwah, which gives son by light. By day for light by day and the ordinance of the moon and the stars of the light by night which divides the sea when the waves thereof roar 
The Lord of hosts is his name. And those, if those ordinances depart from before me, says Yahuwah, then the seed of Israel shall also cease from being a nation from before me forever. Thus says Yahuwah, if heaven above can be measured and the foundations of the earth stretched out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done, says Yahuwah. Behold, the days come, says Yahuwah, that the city shall be built, says, uh, built to Yahuwah from the tower of Hananiel unto the gate of the corner. The measuring line shall yet go forth over against it upon the hill Gered, shall compass about Goad, and the whole valley of the dead bodies and the ashes and the fields unto the brook Kidron, unto the corner of the house gate towards the east shall be holy unto Yahuwah. It shall not be plucked up nor thrown down any more forever. That's book. We're going to get more into it. We're going to get more into it. We're going we gonna to talk about all that stuff, all the dead bodies, all that stuff. We're going to talk about all of it. Um, you know what I'm saying? Probably when we get to Re Revelation, we'll, we'll get deeper. All right. But let's let's go ahead and end there. You know what I'm saying? We'll pick back up next week on, uh, we gonna we probably going to start, y'all willing, we'll, we'll start on uh, Ezekiel 16. I want y'all to see, like, when we talk about, I almost want to grab it right now, but when we talk about the, when we talk about the everlasting covenant, he mentions it again. Right. He mentioned the different covenant with Ezekiel, but he does it in a parable. So we'll pick up that parable in Ezekiel 16 next week. Um, and then we'll kind of see where that leads us. Any questions? Jeremiah 31, 31, 32. So what happens to the first broken covenant? Is it now obsolete, unnecessary, unfeasible? Are we still under the broken covenant until the time of the kingdom come? Yeah, everybody is under the law. The whole world under the law, right? Because the law, the law gave us right, uh, righteousness. But since we broke that covenant, he's telling us what what happened. What? So this is this has been the message the whole time. The Most High God is saying the same thing the whole time. When we read Ezekiel, he said, "The soul that sins does what? Die. The soul that sins dies. Most High God didn't pull that out of thin air." That's according to the law, right? Our law says, if you sin, you are cursed. The word curse means devoted to destruction, right? So there is a curse on sin. So everybody is under the law. That's why everybody has to die, right? Every single person has to die. But we're talking about the soul, right? Most of God ain't talking about the body. He's talking about the soul. So for your soul, he says, if a man is righteous and he turns away, then he shall save himself alive. He shall be delivered. Now, he didn't explain it in Ezekiel, but we know if we fast forward talking about Yahushua, Yahushua is that deliverance. Right. So Yahushua in the new covenant that's talked about in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31, uh, verse uh, 31 going on down, but definitely verse 31 and 32 He's saying, I'm going to make a new covenant with you. And that new covenant is the deliverance. It's the path to deliverance because he's going to put a new heart in us and he's going to write his law on that heart. So then you ask the question, is the law done away with obsolete? God forbid. Right. Because the law is going to be written on the heart of everybody that's resurrected. But we have a new path to that covenant. So now, Yahushua. Is the test? He's the one who's gonna make the new covenant. He's the one that has the authority over the new covenant. He got authority. Why? Because he kept the whole law. Everybody else sinned, which means they're devoted to destruction. He kept the whole law and then still got the penalty of death. He wasn't supposed to die. So because he got that penalty, in essence, he bought everybody. Everybody is under his control. He has the authority over everyone. Because he had he faced a penalty that he didn't deserve. Right? Most high God has to resurrect him because according to the law, a man, a man who does these things shall live by it. Right? That's law. So now the law, because that's law, the most high God gotta resurrect him. He's resurrected. He has authority. Now he can tell you this is what you need to do to get into this new covenant. So just like Moses prophesied to us in the 18th chapter. A Deuteronomy, he said, it's going to be a prophet that's just like me. Remember, Moses brought up, he brought a covenant to us, right? 
So he's telling you it's going to be a prophet that brings you a new covenant. That's not according to the, the covenant that I'm making with your father, that I made with your father. Right. It's going to be a prophet that brings you a new covenant. Whatever he says is required of you. That's in our law. So if you're not doing what Yahushua say, you're breaking the law. That's period. That's it's no other way to look at it. Right. So that's what he that's that's to answer the question. It's not obsolete. Right. Because the law still has to work. Everybody still has to die. And the reason that they dying is according to the law. So the most high God said the sin that that I mean, the uh, the soul, anybody who doesn't continue in all the things in the law shall be cursed. Right. So everybody has to die. That's according to the law. Right. And then after that, you get resurrected. If you get resurrected, it's according to the new covenant. Right. You're going to get resurrected and get confirmed into the new covenant. And what he what we learned about in Ezekiel, what we learned about all in the New Testament is repenting from everything that the Messiah tells us will not uh, grant us an uh, uh, entrance into the kingdom. So the new the new covenant is by it's like it's by faith. Like that's why that's why um, Paul was saying it's by faith. You know what I mean? And uh, with the old covenant, that stuff, um, all of that stuff was given to us. The promise was given to us. We already had our land. We, we broke that covenant. All of the promise from the old covenant was fulfilled when he gave us our land um as far as uh us giving our land when he promised to abraham isaac and jacob saying you know i'm gonna give you a seed this land he gave us the land he gave us a law say if you keep this law you can be in this land so now we broke it he takes the land away so now he has to give us a new covenant to be able to come back into the land we can't go into the land under the old covenant because we broke it he gives us a new covenant we live by faith by faith we get in there the promises from the new covenant has not been fulfilled yet. Therefore, you need we therefore the old covenant can't be done away with because the new one, the promises from the new one is by faith. And we don't have that yet. Right. We don't have the new covenant in our possession right now. So when those things are given to us, uh, when the when the in the resurrection, now the new covenant is like fully in effect. Right. So we are we are operating on faith that if I do what Yahushua says. I have faith that if I do what he says, he's going to fulfill this covenant. He's going to give me that life. Right. So that's why that's why, you know, I get it can be confusing. But the new covenant hasn't necessarily like kicked in like that yet. That's why when y'all was like, I can't drink this with you until I drink it with you in a new in the new covenant. Because if you know, the old covenant was sealed with Moses and the 70 elders on the mountain. They ate and they drank right before God. Right. That sealed the covenant. So y'all sure didn't seal the new one. He didn't drink got to remember he got to bring it back he got to bring he got to bring us back so that he can fulfill that part also um so if that helps yeah the new covenant ain't in effect at all yeah remember if you look at if you if you look at all the parables right look at all the many parables that Yahushua gave us he talked a lot about a wedding feast and he talked a lot about an invitation to the wedding feast remember relate a covenant to a marriage right so if you have you have somebody being married, that is them sealing the covenant in consummation when 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 they are on their honeymoon. Right. The way we kind of traditionally look at it now. Right. They'd be on their honeymoon and that's when they seal the marriage. So they have a feast, they eat and then there's blood. There's a sacrifice. Right. And we talk about blood. We talking about, you know, what I'm saying what happens when, a, you know, a, a man lay down with a virgin. Right. So he said that that whole process, right, is 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 a consummation of a marriage. So that's what Yahushua is talking about with a covenant. He goes into the covenant with all of our people. Right. So that hasn't happened yet. That marriage hasn't happened yet. Remember, we read about that in Revelation. That part hasn't happened yet. So there is no new covenant right now. Like the brother said, it's only talking about faith. It's only talking about getting the invitation to that. What we're doing right now. Is what needs to happen to get the invitation to that ma that marriage. That's it. We just need to be invited, right? And so Yahushua is telling us this: is what you got to do to be invited. Law ain't done away with. Law ain't obsolete. Law ain't nothing. It's just how do I get an invitation to get to the point where I can have a law written on my heart, right? If you can't get to the invitation, then it don't matter. You're gonna be under the law and you're gonna die. And you're going to be devoted to destruction and you're going to burn. Right. But if you get an invitation, then you're going to be resurrected. 
right? But yeah, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it more on the fellowship call tomorrow. Um, any other questions that y'all want to talk about right now? All right, well, let's pray out. Mm-hmm.